Welcome to Walking in the Word. Today we're talking about the four rules for Bible study. As a teacher, I know the goal of teaching kids how to read is to get them to understand what they're reading. Of course, this first begins with decoding and learning letter sounds, but that's not where it ends. Literacy has to do with reading to understand, and that is the goal of Bible reading. We must remember that we are reading and studying God's word with the goal of understanding the message God has given to us. That's why biblical literacy is so important to me. Literacy means the ability to read, write, speak, and listen in a way that makes us communicate effectively and make sense of the world. So biblical literacy is a way to read, write, speak, and listen to God's word in a way that makes us communicate God's word effectively and help us make sense of the word through a biblical lens. So here are some rules to Bible study that will help you develop biblical literacy and become a strong student of the word. First, before I read the Bible, I always ask the Holy Spirit to open my eyes to see, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive and understand His Word. The Bible is a spiritual book, so we cannot and will not understand it without the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, keep in mind that there are many historians who validate the information in the Bible, but they don't believe it is the inspired Word of God. There are many who call themselves Christians, albeit progressive Christians, who say the Bible is a good book with some good things in it, but they don't believe it is the inerrant word of God. There are also many who read the Bible, but walk away scratching their heads because they don't understand it. So it is a spiritual book written to God's people. It is not written to the unbeliever, although there are many unbelievers who have read it and given their hearts to Jesus. The point is, we can't and will not understand spiritual things without the help of the Holy Spirit. So first, ask God for the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom before you read it. Second, never read a Bible verse. There are no verses in the Bible. The original authors did not break up the text by chapter and verse. So we need to be mindful of this as we read. When we isolate verses, we run the risk of taking verses out of context and misunderstanding the verses. That's why I said we must lay the groundwork and do a few things before we study the Bible. So see my video titled, Do This Before You Read the Bible. I'll put the link in the description. Third, put your commentaries last. I used to want to jump to the commentaries so that they could tell me if I was right. Did I understand the text? But I've learned to observe the text and do the work myself and go to the commentaries last. When we get into the book of John, I'll show you how to do this. This is helpful because it causes you to engage your own mind and observe the text with the eye of the Holy Spirit as he guides you into all truth. That doesn't mean that you can't and shouldn't use commentaries, but it means they have their place and putting them last will make you less dependent on them and use them more as a tool, as a resource. For example, I read the essays of C.S. Lewis and I go through and highlight the text, take notes and try and understand the text before I read anything else about it. When I'm all done, I will look up summaries and passages of what others say about those essays and it helps me with my understanding. So you see that this is the same concept as saving commentaries until the end. You can do it with any nonfiction. So fourth, don't ask, what does this verse or passage mean to me? It doesn't matter what it means to you. Remember that the Bible has a meaning that doesn't change. It can't mean something different today that it didn't mean when it was written. How you apply it can be different, but its meaning cannot. That means we should never ask someone else, what does this verse mean to you? I don't give a rip what it means to them. I want to know what God's trying to tell me. That's like asking someone, what's your truth? The truth is the truth. It doesn't change. The first book we're going to study in this series is the book of John. We'll dive into the author, purpose, and date it was written and the intended audience in the next video.